I'm Scott Almiller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. I had a question from Renee today as to how will her children, if she's living here in Nicaragua and they're young, growing up in Nicaragua, what are they going to do about jobs or careers or income when it comes to the future because they're not going to be moving here as seasoned adults? They have a completely different scenario. So that's a great question. Let's get right to that in today's show. I'm going to read Renee's actual questions. My biggest question is what to do with my kids without residency or citizenship if they decide to stay in Nicaragua. Doesn't make sense for me to work in Nicaragua, nor do I need to, but how do I ensure my kids' future here? They're only five and six, and we plan on staying for the long haul. So this is a really great question and an important thing to consider, although it is also important to remember that it is something your children are going to have to consider the same as they would anywhere else. If you are still living in your home country, USA or Canada, for example, I do know that Renee is from Canada, that your kids would be having the same questions. Oh, well, they're Canadians. What are they going to do about jobs, careers, future income because we live in Canada? Now, it seems more obvious because it's your home country, so you think about it a little bit differently. But the question remains the same. There's a lot of options out there, and you can go in a lot of different directions. It could be that you recommend going to private school and then private university and on to a professional certified career. It could be that you want to go into business and invest. It could be that they want to uh, be artisans or maybe they just want to be blue collar workers and I don't mean to say just be like that just it's a simpler path to get into the career field it's a great way to go especially these days often there's better opportunities in traditional blue collar work than there is in other things all those things are possibilities in your home country we have similar options or similar range of options when we're talking about living in another country. So we're going to talk about Nicaragua specifically. And this question is often uh, is, is a very good one for me because I have two children of my own. Mine are older, 13 and 15, and they've been living abroad from the United States, which is our home country, for most of their lives since they were very, very small. So we've had to think about these things quite a bit. So this actually comes uh, as a pretty good question for me to be answering. So let's talk about a few different things right from the beginning. First of all, one of the things that you have to understand when living abroad anywhere is that you're moving to a new country. There's a possibility that your children will want to move to a new country as well when they're older. Mine are certainly thinking about it. It is in the realm of possibility that they will stay in Nicaragua. For sure, they love it here, but they will also consider moving some other places right now one of the places that they've kicked around is Guatemala, which is within the border zone. It's barely foreign, right? It's it's pushing the definition of a foreign country, but it is technically another place. But they're interested in possibly, at least when they're young, you know, getting away from their family a little bit, living on their own and living in the big city. And Guatemala has a really big city. So it has a lot of draw for them in that way. So that's something that they may consider. And in which case they're going to be newly looking for whatever their future is going to bring in a new country, the same as if they at 18 had moved to Nicaragua from the United States or moved to Canada or to Western Europe or wherever. And at that point, they kind of have to figure that out on their own to some degree. And we just have to accept that that's how it works when kids go out and, and move to a new country, right? You're not able to prepare them for every possibility. So we have to understand that uh, there's a certain amount of where are they going to live isn't defined by where you are. Now, of course, by moving to Nicaragua, there's every possibility that they will choose Nicaragua for the long haul. So we're going to focus on that to a bit. But it's also important to understand that they were born in Canada and they are you're already expecting them not to return to Canada. Well, that's fantastic. Maybe Nicaragua will be the right home for them. And that's all just wonderful. But we have to understand that they do have every possibility of simply going back to Canada and having the same career options that they would have had, had you not left at all. Or maybe you'll return. Let's assume that's not going to happen. That's not within your plans. But they may return without you. Or they may stay here where you are. Or they may go to a third party country. And in all those cases, you have to kind of evaluate again. Had they grown up in Canada, got to 18, and said, we're going to move to Nicaragua now, would having grown up in Canada and having those resources in some way aided them once they got to Nicaragua? No, they'd be in exactly the same boat. And if they grow up in Nicaragua, go through the same processes and then decide to move back to Canada, will having been in Nicaragua be a detriment to them? No, if anything, it's probably going to be a positive. They'll have a bunch of world experience that other people will not likely have. And that will probably give them a leg up being natural Canadians with also a lot of foreign experience tends to work out really well. That tends to be very beneficial for someone. So that's something to consider. 
consider. So once we think about all those options and we end up saying, well, yes, but let's consider what if they stay in Nicaragua, let's only focus on that. We're going to assume that they absolutely love it here and this is where they want to make their futures. What are they going to do? Well, basically they're in a really good spot, but again, the world is your oyster. You can do so many different things that it's a little bit difficult to really anticipate what's going to be right for your kids. My kids have a lot of different options and I'll talk about them a bit because I think it explains a number of things. Do they decide they just, if they were to decide that they just want to go work, they do, do not want to be investors, they don't want to be entrepreneurs, they really just want to go take a more or less normal job in a normal career, right? Could be graphic artist, maybe it's as a copywriter, maybe it's as a, uh, you know, engineer of some sort, maybe as a programmer, uh, any number of careers, right? They can maybe English teacher, right? They're going to be able to go and take a job. Now for us, that's the United States. For you, it may be Canada. For someone else, it might be England, Australia, whatever. Uh, they can go take online work for those countries the same as they could if they were in those countries and work remotely. Now, does that limit their options to some degree? Yes, of course it does. But limiting options is not actually the bad thing that people make it sound like. The idea that you need lots of career options is actually a really dishonest sales pitch used by universities universities to try to make people panic about not having enough job options and trying to get them to open more doors. If you hear things like that, oh, it opens more doors for you, you have more career options, all those are negatives. Those are not things that are actually good for you in the long run. What they are saying is that if we give you more places that would be willing to hire you, regardless of their quality, that somehow that's better for you. But I don't know if you've thought about this. Other than hustle culture, more, most of us only work a single job, at least at a time. We don't need thousands or millions of jobs. We need one, maybe two. Well, when we're talking about how many jobs can you do online, the average person might be able to do 10 or 20,000 jobs that are available to them. And if they were in person, sure, they may have a million jobs open to them. But it doesn't change the fact that there are more jobs available than you could reasonably ever do in a lifetime. So the fact that there are more jobs available doesn't actually bring us any positive. If your only goal is to find any work whatsoever, sure, the more doors that are open, the more likely someone is to hire you quickly, but there's so many jobs available, even if you aren't local somewhere, that that's not really very relevant. You have roughly the same chance of being hired. Now, if you're talking about, yes, you want that entry level, like working at McDonald's or something, yes, that's much easier to do in person. There are some advantages there, but when you're talking about actually getting into a career and paying your way in the world, it's actually easier if you don't have those options available to you. I was just talking to uh, uh, Jillian about this the other day about how there's often some in many cases especially in like careers like this making things a little bit harder for someone to get started often actually acts as a catalyst to pole vault them in their career they'll end up skipping the really easy entry steps in a field and move up a little bit faster because they have to they'll push a little bit harder they'll learn a little bit more they'll do things on their own and suddenly they're way ahead and in a better position so don't consider that it doesn't open as many doors actually is a negative assume unless your children are really just looking for anything that's going to pay any bills whatsoever they're really going to have an advantage both because it's going to force them to look for better jobs and that's probably Probably a good thing and also that it's going to give them more world experience which alone is going to open a lot of doors but unlike being in person and being able to do manual labor or just put your butt in a seat where you don't have value as a human only as a seat warmer then they're going to uh, uh jobs that do that are really bad jobs right let's just be honest any job that doesn't care about your ability to do the work, but only cares about the fact that you exist in a seat, that's just welfare. They're just giving you money for a breathing. And while that's nice that there are jobs that do that, I guess, it doesn't make much sense. It's not a good work environment. You're never going to be happy there. You're never going to take pride in your work, and many people don't. It's really depressing. But if you're, take, if you're limiting your jobs to ones that are only valuing the fact that you're able to do work and that you're able to bring value to the organization, chances are it's going to be a better job because you have a way to actually be rewarded and feel good about the work that you're doing. So that's a big positive. And then if you look for jobs that are rewarding you for having broader experience and unusual experience, while that doesn't guarantee 
guarantee it's going to be a better job, it is likely to be. At least it's going to lean towards the better jobs. So in all those cases, by having uh, grown up in Nicaragua, there's a really good chance, because they have unlimited access to the Canadian market, the same as if they had stayed in Canada all their lives, that they're going to be in really good shape for that. The second piece kind of harkens back to the first one. My very first point was that just because you're living in Nicaragua and your kids are being raised in Nicaragua does not imply that they will decide to live in Nicaragua long term. At the time that they're going out for work, they may, de to decide, they may decide to live anywhere in the world. And at that point, they will have to evaluate what their job and career and entrepreneur options are based on what's available to them at that time. This is a very complex thing that really your kids are going to solve on their own. And I know that sounds like, well, how are they going to do that? But realistically, they have a much better chance of doing that than you will. You'll maybe suggest some options, but they're going to decide what they can do, what they want to do, and how they're going to do it. My kids may decide that they want to go take a job, but they almost also may decide that they want to uh, be a novelist, right? Or that's the, they want to be novelists. And in doing so, they can choose to live wherever and figure out how those different pieces are going to go together. They have uh, a much bigger selection than than I would have for them. If I was picking jobs for them, I don't know what things they might be interested in. I don't know what weird niche things may pique their interest. I don't know which countries are going to just grab them as they travel around the world. And I don't know what situations are going to arise throughout their lifetimes that I can't predict, right? They're, they're going to be on the ground making those decisions very different than I could make ahead of time. So that's important. So that first thing, we don't know where they're going to end up. The fact that you're in Nicaragua now doesn't dictate that they will decide to work in Nicaragua at the time that they're adults. But again, assuming that they do, the next piece is we don't know that they're going to uh, decide not to be residents or citizens. That was part of your question, given that you're not resident or citizen, but your residency is not reflective of their residency. Keep in mind that one, we're talking about a thing that is very far away in time. So nothing about what work can be done, how you get residency or anything like that, that is in place today is reflective of what it's going to be like then. So we can't use that as much of a basis of anything. 12 years minimum is a really long time. And so the idea that you can look at what residency is today and decide how it's going to affect them in the future doesn't really doesn't really work that way, right? And the idea that you don't have residency in no way implies that they won't choose to have residency. If for some reason that they want to have residency, and maybe because it affects their job opportunities, or maybe it doesn't, or for whatever reason, they will, once they're 18, have the ability to choose their residency separately from you. Also, you'll have the opportunity to choose residency for yourself all along this path. So it's not like by not getting residency today that in some way you're stopping yourself from getting residency in the future, and nothing you do is stopping them from getting residency in the future. So if there was some benefit to having residency for them, for the careers that they're interested in, then they can simply get it at any time and not a big deal. That's not a showstopper for them. And as children who will be being raised in Nicaragua, I'm speaking a little bit out of turn here, but we can pretty safely assume that if they are actually starting their lives here as very small children, they're going to be on a path where the option to become citizens is real for them. For you, it probably isn't. Citizenship is an extremely difficult, very complex thing here in Nicaragua. And of course, like everything else, it changes over time. So we can't predict what it's going to be like for them as adults. But in most cases, if you spend time in a country legally, starting at a very young age like that, and Nicaragua is no exception, then by the time that they are at working age, they will have accumulated like one and a half decades of experience in the country, that will give them some real clout at requesting citizenship. And if this is a, clearly a place that they want to work, they've been adding value, they're looking at a full life here, they're possibly going to have their own kids here, then those are all things that are going to look very positive to Nicaragua when it's considering whether they are good candidates for citizenship. So all of these things, the idea that your decisions, your current situation of not having residency or citizenship in no way affects their future of residency or citizenship. They have easy access to residency basically at any time throughout their lives, and citizenship seems like it will be a real option for them if they decide to stay here in Nicaragua. So they're really looking good from that perspective as well. Now, as we point out in lots of videos, just because there may be paths by which they would be allowed to work 
right here in Nicaragua, not from, but actually in, doesn't mean that that will ever make sense for them. It might, but it would require a lot of changes to occur over time that we don't expect to happen within that time frame. It could, absolutely could, and it'd be great if it did, but we don't expect that it will, and you can't count on that. So what are some options, realistically, that they're going to be looking at for their futures? Well, one, just taking a job online and working for whatever jurisdiction they're allowed to work in. Most likely, Canada, in their case, United States, in my kids' cases, and this everyone can figure out where they're allowed to work. And there's plenty of jobs online that anybody can do, so the fact that they are Canadian may not even be necessary, and that, they're, that they are or are not Nicaraguan may not play into it in any way whatsoever. It's just online work that they're able to do. That is also an option. For example, there are many jobs in the United States that would be able to hire them. Being Canadian may make some things more complicated. I do know as an American, my companies in the United States do not hire Canadians specifically. We can hire from all over the world, but not from Canada. Canada specifically is anti-business to uh, an extreme degree. I know of no country that even approaches it. And so it's, it's a standard. I know lots of companies that say they just don't do business with any Canadian companies or Canadian employees. They're just too complex, too many liabilities. They're avoided. Canada goes out of its way to make sure its people don't get the foreign jobs. But it still can happen. It's just a little bit harder as a Canadian. Of course, your children will have the ability to give up their Canadian ship if that is something that is hindering them in the future. Again, not something, any, nothing you do is going to impact that decision for them. That is their decision and just part of their flexibility as adults when they get to that point. Assuming that they don't want to just go work for someone else, I didn't want to, well, they have a number of options. They could become entrepreneurs and start their own businesses. For example, I started a YouTube channel. Not advising that, that is not a good way to pay your bills, but it is an option. There are people who are doing this all over the world, and media creation is a very real thing. There's also freelancing. There are plenty of different careers that you can do as a freelancer. You can be a graphic artist, you can be a, uh, a programmer, you can be in IT, any number of things where you're simply a consultant and you're not really starting a business, you're just providing yourself out as a consultancy and you can work anywhere in the world. This is something that I started doing in the 1990s and it morphed into a much larger company doing many things, but that is how I got my start. And that's super flexible. Anyone can do that. So if they have an area of expertise that they're interested in, and of course, they're too young right now to determine what that might be normally, but as they get older, there may be a lot of different areas of expertise that they could identify and end up getting into. And of course, because you're living in Nicaragua, it makes it even easier to get yourself that leg up in a lot of different fields. I was really lucky that I started my career very young at age 13. I was able to get in and start building a resume, but there's nothing that stops your kids from doing that from Nicaragua as well. And having more flexibility because Nicaragua in general just keeps giving you more flexibility, whether it's more financial power because you don't have as many taxes or bills, whether it's just more freedom because they just let you do more things and, and you're much more able to argue for this is the right thing for my kids. Let me do it. Oh, you're trying to do good things. Great. Right. That's more likely to give them more options for their future in in those ways. And of course, beyond uh, those things, they could become investors. Now, obviously, they're going to have to come up with some money for that, but that is something they could potentially do. Maybe not immediately, but it's well within reason that with some work or some making connections or some amount of convincing you to give them money, right? They may become investors in Nicaragua, at which point they may make money off of their investments. We don't think that that is something that's wise to do today. But in 12 years from now, when they're at the very first possible moment of doing something like that, it may be. So this is something we just don't know what it's going to be like in the future, but that's a reasonable thing. And that's something they could theoretically start long before they're at that age, right? And entrepreneurship, all these things are things they could start long before they're actually adults and have a leg up. I always advise, like one of the the worst things we can do for our kids is pushing them to this idea of, oh, wait until you're really old to make life decisions. No, no, no. Make life decisions early, fail early and fast, learn, grow and advance, right? Huge, huge difference in the people who wait and let life pass them by trying to make the perfect decision versus people who are willing to make wrong decisions and get more experience and grow and, and earn money and stuff as they do it. You're going to find that that's much more valuable for most people. So maybe they want to invest. If they invest, then maybe that investment's going to make money and that investment will open the door for them to work locally. Probably not something they're going to want to do. But again, in 12 plus years, maybe it is. That could change. And they're going to have all kinds of different expertise. They're going to have access to people. They're going to have made connections throughout their, their childhood. So they may have access to jobs or careers or just whatever that you may not envision. So really, they have a lot of options. And not just here in Nicaragua, 
not just in Canada, but the world over, and a lot of flexibility. So if you think of it from that perspective, they're just going to be Canadians who are currently residing in Nicaragua, who have access to work from a low-cost market, unlimited right to work from that market, unless that changes, and they have full right to work remotely in Canada. They probably have the right to work remotely in most places in the world, and they have the flexibility to make less money. They don't need nearly as much money to live on. So uh, remote jobs that people in Canada are taking and struggling to pay their bills, that will allow them to live like kings and queens here in Nicaragua, unless that changes too, right? Anything can change, your decisions can change, right? So it's one of the advantages of being in the expat mode is that yes, you can reevaluate at some point in the future and say, well, this was the right thing for us for X amount of time, just like you're doing with Canada now. You're saying Canada was right for the first so many years. Now we're thinking Nicaragua is going to be right. At the moment, you think it's right for forever, but that could change, admittedly. And if it does, you can move on. You have the power to move on. You're not locked down. You weren't locked down in Canada either. Right? And that's what you're discovering now, that Canada wasn't the right choice and you can make new choices and go somewhere else based on what's right for you now. And that's what you're doing. So your kids are going to have that same flexibility. The advantage is, is that they have already the right to stay in Nicaragua. That's not going to be a problem for them. But they also have the right to move to Canada at any time and act like they never left. Because in a way, they never did. They're just on permanent vacation is how it's seen. So they could go back to Canada at any moment and, and be in the same boat that they would be if you weren't leaving Canada. That's an important mental space to be in. That's why I'm repeating it a bit. A lot of people really feel like when you become an expat that you're burning your bridges and leaving things behind. So that's not what you're doing. You're not giving up your Canadian citizenship, unless there's something I really don't know about here. Uh, you're not, you know, most of us aren't giving up our American citizenship. It's not even that easy to do, let alone something you'd want to do. Uh, you don't generally give up citizenships. Normally, you want to hang on to them. You may want to have more than one, but you don't want to get rid of old ones, normally. Totally exceptions. But in general, that's not something you want to do. That's not something you're looking at doing. It's certainly not something you're going to do to your kids, nor do most places let you do that to your kids. They're Canadian. Canada is not going to let them uh, renounce that until they're 18, at which point then maybe they can, maybe they can't. That depends. But that won't be a decision until they are adults and decide what they want to do because countries don't let you take away someone else's citizenship. They protect that because they're citizens. So all of those things, I think you actually have a lot of options. Of course, there could be challenges in their life because it's a path less traveled, right? Road less traveled. And uh, you have to think outside the box a little bit, but it's only a little bit. It's very much, they just have more options, not fewer. It's just that their physical starting point is a little bit different than what most people anticipate. But when you look at it in a more general sense and start evaluating with them at a young age, start talking about, well, what kind of job could you do that gives you the flexibility to live a better life? And that's one of the things that my kids are talking about, right? Do they want to invest here in Nicaragua? Yes, that is something that they plan to do. Do, but that's not their their main income. It's just something that they do want to do. They want to continue uh, to help here in Nicaragua to create jobs. And maybe that will help offset their other income, give them a little bit more flexibility because they've been doing it. You know, it starts with our investments and they'll hopefully still be there for them. So that's one thing. They hope to have a very normal career where they're able to work online and produce things and sell it all throughout the world, but be an American business because why not? They're Americans. They have a hundred percent right to do that. There's no reason not to leverage that capability. Just like I do. My company is American. I work out of the United States, but I live in Nicaragua. The fact that I'm in Nicaragua doesn't hold back my career. It wouldn't have held me back if I had started the company 25 years later and was doing it now. Waiting 25 years would have held me back a lot, but not doing it from Nicaragua. So all those things, I think your kids are going to be in great shape. You just have to approach it a little bit more outside the box, but not very much outside the box. Mostly you want to approach it from the same way you would have approached really good decision making for careers and opportunities for the future. Had you not left Canada, just without Canada doing the normal pressure, and the U.S. does the same thing, pressuring you to follow these tried and true, not good for you, but good for society, paths. That's most of the stuff that they get from school, from guidance counselors and that kind of stuff, isn't designed to be good for your kids. It's designed to provide for the jobs that the country wants them to do because someone else's kids want to get those really cool jobs that they don't want to tell you about. So there's whole processes to encourage you to do enough to put food on the table, but not enough to get in the way of other people who are paying to have you not be in their way, basically, is what it comes down to. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And we got the regular four videos up on the screen. Just click on one and that will help promote the to the algorithm uh, that this show is valuable to you.